Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to make flowers using our book pages. Lots of different ways of doing it. You know, you've got dies for those that have got dies. There's punches, but what if you don't have either of those? So I'm going to run you through three different, three, not two, three different ways to make make flowers using your book pages. If you're anything like me, we've all got lots of book pages and I'm forever trying to work out different ways to use them because I just love my book pages. And word to the wise, I've played with lots of different books while I was doing these. So I've done up a few prototypes. There's book pages and there's book pages. Right. So here's some of the book pages that I've done. Oh, and I thought I'd play with the red one but the first one I did which was that one so I've actually done him as a little cluster can you see him yep but the book paper that I used for this which is um, 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 um is extremely thin and in hindsight I should have glued two pages together before I cut these ones out. Now, I've used a die cutting machine, lots and lots of die cutting machines out there from your electronic ones to your hand ones and all sorts. I've got just a hand one, which is the big shot machine. Um, but this paper should have been glued together because he ended up extremely thin, which made it very hard to ink around the edges and very hard to shape. So that's why it ended up just as a cluster on a little piece of hessian. After that, I then played with another die, um, that one, on a slightly thicker piece of book page. Now, and that's this one. Love this one. I don't know if you can see him from there. And that's gonna be the first one that we do today. So it's just from normal piece of book page. And I like this one. It's not that old, probably from about 1950, I think from memory, but it has a wonderful color with it. So some of the other book pages you can see with this one, which is a little miniature music sheet one, but it is very, very white. So I tend to go over it. I've got some that I've tea stained. And then because I just pulled this out and I was playing with it, I um, went over it with oh, my antique linen in the Distress Ink. So I've done the whole page just to make it quicker. But this paper is a lovely, lovely colour. You'll always get different colours in them and I tend to darken them a little bit. But this one's just a beautiful colour on its own. So I've cut him out and I've just cut out three little sizes so that is this die here so it comes with five and then look in all honesty I can't remember the brand of this one I've these are just a few of my flower dies that was that first one that I cut out that the paper was too thin so I've used this one and I've used this one this die this die is this one now with this one, we've just I've just then popped some stamen in the center. And so that's like this. And they're just plain cream stamen, but they're really tiny ones. So they work really well for the smaller flowers. And then I've literally just got my stamen. I'll grab a couple and I'll show you what I did. Just to give them a little bit of color. I've lost one already just to give them a little tip of color. I've grabbed, uh, where is it? Here it is. Oh, stretch over Kylie. Um, the crackling campfire in the distress ink. I've got my stamen together in a group, however many I wanted, and I've literally just rubbed them over, which just gives a little bit of color, not full color. I don't know whether you can see that but just a little bit of colour, enough to give a pop through here. Oh, 
fingers so I am in shot so yeah so it'll just be enough to give it a pop of color through the center I've then just made a hole in the center after I've completed my flower poked them through and then used my white glue gone round and round and round and round, and round until it's completely dry and then I've just chopped them off so with our first one with our using a normal die which is this one I'll just sit these ones to the side and I'll sit those to the side now I've got they're actually called flower shaping mats <laughs> you can see it's been used for other things as well um, you can just use a little piece of craft foam something soft and squishy the actual flower mats are very very soft they're almost like um, I don't know they feel a little bit like scuba diving wear you know that that sort of fabric but they are a very dense foam but it's still squishy you can get away with this sort of foam which is what I use for my stamping mat um, lots of different ways to shape them and I forgot to bring it out you will get you will get um, no I don't have them here um, you'll get little embossing tools or little flower shaping tools. And they're usually a little wooden thing or plastic and they've got balls on each end. You can use those. What I like to use is this little doohickey. Uh, from memory, it's from Universal Crafts. It has a very large end on one end and just a half circle. Oh, gosh, my fingers are dirty. Sorry. That's from um, all this inking. But you do need to be careful of these. I have got many of these where I've snapped this. Not been concentrating, pushed a little bit too hard. They're not that expensive. They're only a couple of dollars. So it doesn't matter too much if you do snap them. But I have quite a collection where I now only have this end. So with our flowers, with this lot, oops, as I said before, that's these ones. The sizes that I've used are the smallest one, the next one up, and then I've missed a size and gone to that size. Okay, so you don't have to go every single size. This one I can do the five layers, I can just do two layers, I can do whatever I like and just play with them and they'll come out different each time. So this is me, I have to ink. So around my edges, I'm going to use my Distress Ink in the Walnut Stain and just very quickly still do my edges. I find, especially with the flowers, you know me, girls, I tend to ink everything so that they pop and they highlight between layers. And with the flowers, it really does it so that you'll get an actual area so that you can see each petal. So that's why I ink these <laughs> that's i ink everything so it's just one of those things but really if you're debating about inking to ink or not to ink that is the question with your flowers if you're making flowers i suggest you look at inking because it'll just allow your petals to be individualized oh, that's a big word isn't it um but yeah, it'll allow you to see each individual petal. Now you can see why my finger is so dirty. It's not dirty, it's ink, which means I've been playing. I got up this morning and thought, oh, I need to do a tutorial. I've been away for a little while, haven't had a chance to do any. Don't know if anybody's missed me or not. Um, I thought I need to do a tutorial and I thought, ah, oh, book pages again. Let's get the book pages out. I thought, I know, let's play with some of these flowers. So after I'd done all the housework, about lunchtime, it's now mm, a bit after four here, and I've done all the jobs that I had to do and run kids to and from work and all that general normal stuff that we do on a weekend, and sat down a couple of hours ago and thought, right, I'll make up some as prototype and we'll do some of these flowers. Right, so I'll just pop that over there. What I've done is inked one side only. So the other side is not inked, just this side. So if I turn it 
right side down because the right side is now the inch side using the big end of this first and I'll just go in a small circle at the base towards the base of each petal but not right in the center at this stage just want to give them a little bit of shape so you can see now why that original one with such light paper wouldn't work so now I'm going to turn it over so that it's right side up using the small end of this or if you've got the little ball ones it'll still work with the little ball ones and now I just want to go around the edge of each petal just to lift the edge just a little bit up now it makes no difference whether you've got a die whether you've got a punch whether you've hand cut them general rule of thumb this is the way you're going to do a quick and easy shape you can spend as on flowers so now i've gone to the center and pushed him up so now i've got this funny little cupped shape and i'm going to do that on all three remembering right side down to start with in the base of my petal just a little circle so yes yeah, so this is a very quick and easy way of giving a little bit of shape to your flowers and it'll work with no matter what base you've got to start with whether you're using book pages card stock whatever else and it just gives a little bit of shape and it'll work with all of them so and in the center like so so last one turning him over a little bit in the base of each petal turning him over again You'll see I'm just automatically flicking this tool over, which is why I like this tool so much, because I'm not putting one tool down to get a different tool. The um, flower shaping kits you'll find, or the little embossing tools I was talking about before that have the bald edges, will different sizes and all the rest. So I find that with those, I was forever putting one tool down, picking another tool up, putting it down, picking it up, and quite often grabbing the wrong tool at the time. So now I've got three little shaped flowers. Very quick and easy, this one. So with my largest one, and I just use my little white glue, if I can tuck that into my finger, let's get it off the mat because that's how I end up with it all over my mat a little bit of glue in the center and my next one on so for me i tend to go in between the flowers so i could just layer that as such and have my next one in there but let's say we want to do something a little bit different like this one this one i've gone between my bottom one and my next one all it is, a little bit of thread, just normal sewing thread. And I'm sure we've all got oodles of this. Wind it round two fingers. I don't want it too big, this one. I don't want to drop it on the floor either. As much or as little as you like. That'll do me. Um, scissors to chop that. Let him twist. It'll find the center that way. A little bit of glue in here again. Just in your center. And stick that onto the glue. And again, I'll use this because I'm just gonna sit that in the glue so that it holds. And now what I'm gonna do, apart from wiping that tool, a little bit of glue again, and I'll pop my top one on so i just want to be gentle this time because i don't want to lift up all that cotton um, you can see i'm just going around all the cotton so i've now got a dollop of white glue in there put my top one on i'll go between all my petals like that hold him down for a little bit little bit of glue coming out right so now I want to chop where that sewing thread was and that one 
happen. Now my glue is still a little bit wet. What I'm going to actually do is move my cotton around. Just like so. Remembering that it's in that one and not that one. Oh, I've moved my whole. Usually wait until your flower's dry for the top bit. Or at least hold it. Let's hold it. Like so. Hold him out. There we go. So he needs a centre. Now I've put buttons on some. I've put little gems. I've cut another circle for that one and inked over him. Button on that one. Let's go for more of these little centres. Um, 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 too big. Where are they? I've got... I like these little burnt orangey ones. They're just normal little rhinestones. Now you could put some stickles in there, some any of your little pearls, any of those sorts of things. Things that you've got sitting around. Work a treat. You could be doing a steampunk one. Put a little gear in there. They look awesome as well. So because I don't trust the sticky on these, I will, and some of mine are quite old because I've got quite a few of them. So just a little bit of glue again. I will then use my knife if I can find my knife. So just my knife because it just holds it. I will sit him under there just to hang on to it a little bit because it's got a little bit of glue with it. And then I can place it down, put my finger over the top and pull my knife out. Again, I'll take that excess glue and it's a pretty little flower. Now these make great, great clusters, great clusters. They also look really nice on tags, just in your journals. All right, so that's if you've got a die. What if you don't have a die? What if you don't have a die cutting machine? Don't fret, it's punch. And it's not even a flower punch. You know, you could use a flower punch that's what that one's been done out of. So he was just a little flower punch. And I've got that size and I've got that size. Punched those out of book pages and ended up with the same result as what I started with, with, with if I'd cut them out using the dies. So that's those ones and just the two sizes. So I've punched this one out twice and join those two together. And then I've punched that one out twice and joined those two together. Again, separating my petals so that they go between everything. What if you don't have a flower punch? You might have a heart punch. And this is the only heart punch that I have. So, as I said, we're gonna do a red one just because I can. I'll go that way. So I can see. So I want one. And this one's not a very loud punch, so I thought I could punch it while I'm here. Two, you're going to fit. Three. Just trim that bit off and start again. Do a little bit more. So one, two, three. I'll just... I punch out six to start with because I honestly can't remember how many I need for this. Two and three. All right, that's a start. So all I'm going to do is fold them in half so that my wrong side is together. Makes no difference, really. And then I'm going to get my scissors. I'm going to get my little scissors because I can do finer work with that if I can find them. Here we go. I've already got this beautiful petal shape on this side. So now I've got two petals. How easy is that? And that's from a heart punch. So we'll do a few more of those. So again, so this is your folded side. We want the half petal shape on this side coming down and around. 
They don't have to be exactly the same size, just something similar. Right. Again, last one. So now I've got these. So what I'm going to do is join each one together. But first I want to shape them. They're easier to shape before they're the flower. So starting again on with right side down, going in, and this time I'm going further up because I can go right towards that base. So all the way down. Doesn't matter if they get a little bit squashed up, it just adds to the appearance. As far as I'm concerned, look, you might want to be very, very careful with them so that they don't get a little bit crunched or anything else. But for me, I like them worn. All right, so from that, I'm going to turn them over so that now my red side is showing. And I'm just again going to flatten out my top. So each one will turn over and I'm just going around the top. So now I've got, ah, oh, <coughs> sorry, now I've got a slight curve and a flatter top. And around that one, three, four, five and six and you can do as many or as little petals as you like so a little bit of glue on each petal so down the end let's hope it comes out because i forgot to do the lid up just a little bit of glue you don't need to you know do too much try not to get it to stick to your finger bit more with each petal I like this is where I like the end of this because it takes it off my finger my finger ends up extremely gluey but it just means I've had fun when I finish the day and I, my hands are very inky and gluey and all the rest I know I've been playing Um, and please excuse my other hand. I've um, been brushing down concrete or a brick wall with a little broom, brushing it down and the broom was very little and I kept scraping my hand on the concrete and it hurt like the bilio, but it's just starting to heal. So but it just looks horrible now. So, so sorry about that. And as I'm right-handed, it keeps showing. Right, so there's our base of our flower and I've stuck that to my board. There we go. All right, so there's the base of my flower and all stuck on that side. So now we want to do another layer but we could do it again exactly the same and really layer it up but we want a slightly smaller flower so this time we've already got our slight petal on that side and now we've got smaller petals with the other ones and they will be done exactly the same way go that way Kylie now you can sit each one on the other one to get the right measurement if you like. Or you can just eyeball it, which is what I tend to do. So down, going that way. Starting more in the center this time. And down, so I'm cutting off way more. So you can see this is what I've cut off on this one. 
and that's what I cut off on the first ones. So there's been quite a bit more cut off. So again, we'll sit them down, right side down, do exactly the same thing again. They're not as big this time, so it's not gonna take anywhere near the time. And you'll notice with these ones, I haven't inked. Too busy talking. Just very lightly, because that's how I noticed it. Those ones, you can't really see where each petal goes in. So I'll very quickly just, and all I want to do is outline around the edges. I'm not necessarily inking onto the paper as such too much. I'm just literally giving it an outline. Right. It doesn't take long, it's just a matter of remembering. So I've got two more to go, but I do still need to flatten the ends of my petals. And the last one. Beautiful. So now they're up that way. I'm just going to flatten the ends of my petals. You could do these any colour you like. Most of mine you'll see are done in that vintage look because 99.99999% mm, of all my journals are a vintage journal. But I thought, why not play with some colours? Now, you could do a longer petal and make these ones, colour them red, make them into a poinsettia for Christmas. You could use your dyed um, papers. All of my papers are coffee dyed or tea dyed. So, because as I said, I don't tend to play with many other colours. But, there's and there's some beautiful colours out there that I see some of you girls doing. The colours are just divine. And so now we're just going to do exactly the same as we did before. Doesn't take long. And the more you do, the quicker they get until you get very gluey hands. And then the longer they take because everything's gluing to you more than the petals. And now I'm trying to move it as I go so that it's not gluing to my actual glass mat. All right, last one. Now that one's so wonky, it's not funny, but that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, I don't mind the color of it. Let's, 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 let's. What could I put in the center of that one? Just to put a little bit of that. Hang on, I'm going to do up that glue. Mm. Right. <laughs> My hands. My hands are so glueified. Just a little bit. I'll just stretch it out of shape. I like mine so that it's very, I don't know dead. <laughs> Let's have a look. Put that in there and that in there. So a little bit of white glue. Which will just hold that. A little bit more on the top. If you're not putting anything between your layers, you don't need that extra glue on the top. Going between, making sure that's nice and glued. Once they're dry, we'll see if I can do it without it being dry. 
Once they're dry, sit them back on your mat and just give them a little bit of a push with that. Now, what can we put in there? I'm on, I'm on the bling thing, so let's see if we can find some more. Maybe a pearl. Maybe a pearl. Let's put a pearl in there. I need to start using up my bling. So, oh, that's a nicer colour. I like those ones and I like the centre of those ones. All right. They're a smaller size and they don't make this look too white with the others. So again, I will put just a little bit of glue because as I said before, I'm not overly trustworthy on the glue holding on the back of my blings, be it pearls, be it rhinestones or whatever else. Once again, I'll use my knife. Sit him in. Push my pearl in. Get rid of the excess glue. I know it's gonna dry clear, but if I can get rid of it a little bit to start with. How's that one? See, he's actually turned out. I'm pleased with that. And I can see me now using that one. Whereas before in the red, when I was halfway through it, I thought, oh, I don't know whether I'd actually use that. But yes, I think I would. Right, so we've used a die. We'll move some of this. We've used a punch, be it a flower punch, or be it a heart punch. So we've got all these. What if you don't have dies? What if you don't have any punches? You could also use a leaf punch. So don't necessarily look at just have to having flower punches. So as I said, I've used a heart punch. You could use a leaf punch. You could use all sorts of punches. But as I said before, what if you don't have a punch? So let's, I've got a little bit left in that. We'll just, yeah, I should have enough. Right, so I want two pieces of that. So now if you don't have a punch or you don't have dies, what we're going to do, if you're doing this with book paper, do two strips. Don't just fold it over. If you fold it over, your words will be half will be round the wrong way, half will be round the right way. Once you've got two little strips, I just want to get rid of that edge. That one's fine. And I'm going to... Fold this concertina style. I've got a bone folder here somewhere. Let's straighten that up. So just keep going backwards and forwards, concertina style. And back again. And then the last time, I don't know how many folds I've got here, and it depends on the paper. I was about to say fabric. It depends on the paper that you're using and to how long it is to start with. Right, so now we've got just this little concertina. We've all done this in school at various times, and I don't know if my um, music notes are up the right way. So just draw a basic petal shape. It doesn't have to be awesome. <laughs> None of my drawing is awesome. Right, so I've just drawn a basic petal shape, which is like our half heart ones. I'll go into my big scissors because it's quite thick now. And I'll just cut round that one. Try and hold it together as I go. <laughs> right. And now I've got that one I haven't. That one. 
all these petal shapes. All right, ready to go. But I like layered flowers. So what have I got left in here? I want to make a couple of small ones as well. So I'll chop off my ends that have no music. Like so. And this one will have a smaller petal and I'll do exactly the same thing. So I'll concertina it. If your paper is thicker, you will definitely need to score it. I should get one more out of that. Um, you will definitely need to use your bone folder just to push it all down as you go. Right. That is not straight, not wonderfully crash hot or anything else. It's definitely not a perfect concertina, but it gives us the idea. And it'll still work because this time we want a smaller petal. So that's a vague petal shape. And around. It's a little baby petal. Oh, fingers really only just hanging on. All right, so let's have a look. And now I've got a little baby petal. All right, so I'll link some sides. See, so you don't necessarily have to have um, punches and dies and all the other trappings of what we do in craft, any craft, journal making, scrapbooking, card making. There's so many crafts out there and they can each be as expensive or as cheap as you want them to be. You've just got to... It's not really reinventing the wheel because they've done that in the first place to actually make these things. Before these things were all around to make our life a little bit easier, we were all making them by hand anyway. So... It's just a matter of rethinking what you've got, how to do it, and how to reimagine it. So I'll do another couple of those. If I can pick them up. I love this little music note paper. Most of my music sheets are all big. This was one, um, hang on, that I found the other week at a book fair. But the whole thing is like baby sheet music and I just love it all right so I'll do one more of those just in case I can always re-ink more and then I'll do some little ones oh I've got lots of little ones there so just quickly ink around those now you could you might be a tearer. I like tearing. There's no reason why we couldn't have, where I just drew around that and cut around it. If you're up for some more time and you're wanting and you like tearing, instead of concertinaing so many together, just do a couple that's tearable. Draw a vague line of where you want to go with your petals on your paper and tear your petal out you'll get a wonderful looking petal that way one two three four just seeing how many i've got here i really don't know how many i'm going to need so let's have a look five i'll do six and six just to see and then i can always add some more in can't i Now, that's that one. Right, so let's just have a look. We might make it vast. Vast, I'm thinking. Ah, we'll shape, it, shape them first. So turning them all over so that it's the non 
inked side down. If that makes sense, you know what I mean by now. Right, shaping the top or the center of it with your big tool of whatever you want. Look, I've got, I've got, apart from a big, big mess, I've got an awl here. At the end, I can use that. If I'm careful, I can use that. So this is what I mean. Look around at what you've got. As I said, these are only a couple of dollars, and I think they're um, Ultimate Crafts, something like that. I'm sure it's Ultimate Crafts. Um, in Australia, there's quite a few scrapbooking shops that have got them. Um, Craft Online, I think, has them. I don't know about Amazon. I haven't done Amazon before. So, but just have a look and I think they're a flower shaping tool. But yeah, they are only a couple of dollars. All right. So just let's leave <coughs> that bit for now. Those are the ones I haven't inked. And we'll see what this one comes out like. So shut that. Get that one. Oh, I've got a tickle in my throat and I don't have a drink. Push these ones away a little bit so it's a, I don't know, a petalless petal. You know, it's started to lose its petals. It's not quite as full as the other ones. Oh, my glue's starting to dry up because I've left the lid off it so long. That's now glued to my table. There we go. Just grab my cloth. <laughs> I might have to really deal with that one later on. One, two, three, four. I wonder if I can just put five. Yes, I can just put five. How's that? Right. So, come up. Move you back around. <laughs> Always stuck. There we go. So now let's do our little ones exactly the same way by sticking them onto the table. Yeah, right. Little bit of glue. You can see why my hands are so gluey and so inky after doing this. But it's a great way to spend an afternoon. They're great things to have on hand. Like I have a cluster box and all sorts of different bits and pieces where things are already done. And when I'm, you know, flying through a journal or whatever else, I've got all these pieces pre-made. As long as they're made in the colours and things that I know I normally use, I can just spend my time and pick them up and go from there. Now I just want five on this one, don't I? So, one more on that. And all these other petals I can just pop aside to use at a later date. All right. Down the glue. Try and, oh, my knife just fell apart. Try and pick that up like so. Give him a squish because he is very wet. wonder. Oh, uh, our clock's about to go off. <laughs> I did try and do this between. We've got a new clock in the house. Um, it's the family, like grandfather clock, um, that dings on the hour and turned up yesterday. And so I went, right, I'll do this between o'clocks but I think I've missed it see now I don't know whether I like just the five petals on that wonder what I could put in there let's have a look let's have a look let's have a look oh I've got some jute I 
it's just choppy choppy Ugh. maybe not quite so much it goes everywhere do I go between I like it better between them I definitely like them better between the layers. I could put it underneath. I could pop them between. I think we'll go between. So layer in there. And they're just so um, random, I suppose, is the best word for it. Just quite a bit in there because it is all um, individual threads. So that should Stick that, pop that one on top. And I'll just have to hold that for a moment. Right. And hope that it all lifts up. Right. Uh, there's dogs at the front, all talking which means our dog will now decide she wants to go outside and party as well. So that one's a little bit different. He needs something in him. How about we go a really deep black? So I'll go back to my bling and I'll go a black to really pick up the music notes. What do you reckon? So here's the clock, sorry. And it's going to go five times. <laughs> I suppose it keeps me on track so I know what time it is. And when I've got to start tea, what size do I want? That one, I'm thinking. Okay. Again with my knife. Sitting him down. Very gently sitting him on because it's got excess glue again, of course, under it. And pick up all that excess. Yep, done. Right, so if I just move all this and all this and put the lid back on my glue, there, move some of this, move some of mine, oops, and some of this and some of this and some of this, just, you know how you do, just push it to the side, it's fine. So, How's that? So, as I said before, some of them I had done previously this morning. So today we've just done, while we've been sitting here talking, there's that one. So he's got just the jute thread between it. We've got that one with just the cheesecloth between it. That was done from the heart punch. That one with the jute thread, and that's just moved that pearl. There you go. With the jute thread was just hand cut out. And that one we did, didn't we? Using a die with a little bit of cotton wrapped around and then trimmed once it's glued in. So I hope you've all enjoyed this. I hope it means that you'll go away and look at your book pages again. Something else to do with our book pages. Look, it, it doesn't have to be book pages. It could be just your normal digitals. It could be just printing of any sort, some old scrapbook paper that you've got floating around, your paper pads. You don't use a great deal of paper when you're doing them. So it's another good way to get through all your paper pads. But I hope you've really enjoyed it. For those of you that have already subscribed, thank you so much. We are slowly getting there. And for those of you that have, please like and subscribe. I'm hoping to come up with many more different ones, just quick and easy, something to do with your other bits and pieces that are sitting there. Thank you, guys. Till next time. Bye.